the real proof that we are children of God, it's not in our profession that we tell people, I am a child of God. It is in our lifestyle. The actions are louder than words. So as it is said, by their fruit, ye shall know them, not by their words. We can speak Christianese all day, but if we do not represent God in the way we live, people will not see or believe the God that we serve. Now, the truth is that a lot of people are looking for God, but they are not looking for a God that is just abstract and people just tell of, oh, God is love, God is good. They are looking for God through us. You and I are the Bible that most people will read. A lot of people will not open the Bible and read, but we are the Bible. Our lifestyle is the real evangelism that we will do to people and they will see our life and Acts and that is how our life will evangelize to people. And that is why in Acts of the Apostle, when he talked about us being witnesses, he did not say that we will go and do witnessing. It is when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we will become witnesses, which is, this is who we are. The very essence of the life we live is I am a witness to God. The words that I speak are witness to God. The way I treat people are witness to God. Now, over time, we have been thinking that the proof of us being deep with God and knowing God is about having the gift of the Spirit. Now, that is the first point I want to talk about. The proof of our faith is not the gift of the Spirit. It is the fruit of the Spirit. In the church culture, from my own experience, they have magnified the aspect of the gift of the Spirit and almost like forget about the fruit of the Spirit. That is just like a byword when they want to say, oh, leave the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, and those looks like the secondary. No, the primary thing is the fruit. By their fruit, you shall know them. The scripture does say by their gift. The truth is that somebody can be a good orator, a very good person when they give speech, very wise and all of that, but then they don't have character when you look at their character it's very poor that is why even in offices you can see someone rise to become the top but then they are very mean they treat people with so much contempt and that is the place that in the christian life that we live our lifestyle is what represents who we are and who we serve it is our lifestyle that is the fruit our character is the fruit that represents god and from what i said a lot of people believe that when somebody prophesies or speaks in tongues that they are really deep spiritually. But personally, I don't see such as people that are spiritually deep. Because like I said, the fruit of the Spirit has been made to look like the secondary part of our Christian life. Which means if you, somebody shows love, it looks like ah, that is the secondary part. No, that is primary because we don't have love in our world. People need love and the way we love will show people that we are children of God. The way we are kind to people will show people that we are children of God. The way we practice patience will show people that we are children of God. But if we go about telling people prophecies, if you go about speaking in tongues all day, and all of those things, it will not change anything. It will not bring anybody into the kingdom. It creates more confusion because people almost think that if you speak in tongues and do all these things and serve God, and serve people in church culture that you are supposed to have a lifestyle that matches what you are doing. But we live in a world that you see so many people who seem to be really spiritual, super spiritual, but then when they come to treating people, they are super mean. They are super hating. Like they are completely in the works of the flesh. And that is the part that we need to recheck and know that the real proof that we are children of God and servants of God is that we bear the fruit of the Spirit. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 said, We have proved ourselves by our lifestyles of purity, by our spiritual insights, by our patience, and by showing kindness, by the spirit of holiness, and by our uncritical love for God. Now, all the things Paul mentioned here are representative of the fruit of the Spirit. The fact that you have the gift of the spirit does not mean that you are super spiritual than somebody that does not operate on that level what benefits you the most and what shows that you are really connected to god is when you have the fruit of the spirit the second thing i need to underline here is that you
can give a gift from a distance. You can send a gift from Nigeria over to wherever you send it to, to any country. But then when it comes to fruit, when it comes to building character, you need to be with someone to learn their character, to be affected by their character. You need to stay in the same place. You need to dwell in the same house. You can send a gift to your child in school if they are in boarding school and all of that. But if you need to build their character, you can't send that. You need to live with them and see by practice how they are living with you. And it is by practice that we are shown to be children of God by our fruits, which is it shows that you are a child of God by the way you love. It shows that you are a child of God by the way you are kind. Because scripture says that the love of God compels us. We are not being compelled by our emotions. Our natural human emotions are just natural like they are. You know, sadness, anger, hatred and all these things. They come naturally to our human life. But that is why scripture says that we are a new creation. The old is gone. The new is come. Now, I am no more dependent on my natural negative emotions to react to people. I am now dependent on the love of God to compel me that even when it's hard and somebody tries to annoy me and I find a place to be patient so that I can be kind to them. Now, in conclusion to this thought line, it is for you to know that operating in the gift of the Spirit is good, but from scriptural perspective, it is for the edification of the church, which is it has its place where it dwells, but it is the fruit of the Spirit that will signify your relationship with God, your Father. If you like, you operate in whatever gift that you operate in, which a lot of people have been so motivated to seek the gift, to covet the gift. It's a good thing. You need the gift of discernment. You need the gift of wisdom and all of that. But then you need to cultivate the fruit. And one thing I'm so confident about is the fact that if you really get close to God, stay at God's feet, stay with the Holy Spirit, and it builds the fruit in you. Forget about the gift. You already have it. Any gift you need, because now the fruit gives you the capacity to handle each gift that it gives you. Such that the gift of prophecy that the Holy Spirit gives you will not bring pride to you. Instead, you have self-control and a lot of kindness so that whenever you are issuing out this word of prophecy to people, it comes with love. That is where maturity in the spiritual things and in your work with God is realized and materialized. It is not about us just being, you know, intangible about our life, our Christian work. It is about us being real and showing people the reality of serving God and loving people the way God wants us to love them. Like the song says, break my heart for what breaks yours. Everything I am for your kingdom's purpose. So what are the fruits of the Spirit? But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope that you've picked something from it and it's a blessing to you. I would love to see you in my next YouTube video. I am OM. Akban, subscribe to this channel if you love the content that is coming your way. Thank you and God bless. Bye-bye.